So, let us now concentrate on what history to take, how to do a clinical examination and what are the diagnostic tests that need to be done. It is very important to take the history of nasal itching because that is the hallmark of allergic rhinitis, sneezing, rhinorrhea, block nose which can occur at a later stage of the disease, whether there are any skin diseases, whether there is any eye irritation or redness, whether the person suffers from shortness of breath and coughing while doing any activities, whether there is any food allergy, whether there is any drug allergy, etc. All these aspects have to be taken into consideration. Family history is also very important. Coming to clinical examination, a thorough ENT examination is mandatory. Examine the nose, throat and the ears. In the nose, look for features of edematous swollen inferior turbinates, which can be pale and boggy. There will be clear watery rhinorrhea. Look for any deviated nasal septum. Look for presence of any nasal polyps. In children, there can be adenoid hypertrophy as well. So, it is very important to do an endoscopic examination of the nose and also look for features of glue ear in the children because adenoid hypertrophy, allergic rhinitis can definitely lead to a presence of glue ear in children. Look for um, cobblestoning appearance in the posterior pharyngeal wall which is a hallmark of uh, pharyngeal allergy. Coming to examination of the eyes, look for any pinkish conjunctiva, look, uh, look for any conjunctival thickening, stingy or ropey uh, discharge, look for corneal vascularization, sometimes there will be ulceration and on the tarsal conjunctiva, there can be papillary hypertrophy and there are special spots called the Horner Stantos spots which can develop in a long standing conjunctival allergy. Nasal endoscopy whenever required has to be done to rule out presence of polyps hidden in the posterior part of the nasal cavity and near the coena and also look for features of adenoid hypertrophy. Examine the chest, auscultate the lungs for features of any wrong type. Now we have finished taking the history, we have examined the patient, it is time for us to arrive at the correct diagnosis. There is an international body called area which, which means allergic rhinitis and its impact on asthma. This body, international body has laid out certain guidelines to classify the allergic rhinitis into intermittent and persistent and also based on the severity into mild and or moderate and moderately severe. So, if the patient has symptoms less than 4 days in a week or less than 4 weeks at a stretch, it is called intermittent allergic rhinitis. Whereas, if symptoms persist for more than 4 days in a week and more than 4 weeks at a stretch, it is called persistent allergic rhinitis. If the symptoms are mild, which is which does not cause sleep disturbance or impairment of school or work and if there is no sleep disturbance or imp no impairment of daily activities, it is called um, mild. Whereas, if the symptoms are very severe, interfering with their day to day activity, school, ac uh, leisure activities, performance at work or, or causing sleep disturbances, it is called moderately severe. It can be either mild intermittent, mild persistent or moderately severe intermittent or moderately severe persistent. Now, it is time for us to do the allergy skin prick test and to confirm the allergens. Before that, we have to decide whether the patient is a suitable candidate for uh, do, doing the skin prick test or whether the patient is a candidate for alternative tests. Here is a case scenario, a 16 year old girl presented with excessive sneezing, watery nasal discharge and bilateral intermittent nasal obstruction from the last 4 years. She also had episodes of wheezing and chest tightness since childhood. So, she was diagnosed to have a persistent severe allergic rhinitis with mild intermittent asthma affecting the quality of life. She was uh, treated with oral antihistamines, intranasal corticosteroids and uh, anti leukotrienes as well as meter dose inhalers consisting of LABA and ICS and because she is a young girl, we did not want her to progress to a frank asthma. Therefore, it was decided to do a allergy skin prick test. She was found to be highly sensitized to two types of dust mites, DP and DF, dermatophagoids teronius and uh, farini and hence she wa it was decided to do a Im give a immunotherapy for her. But in the meantime, this girl developed severe anaphylactic reaction to the dust mite allergen itself and she was correctly resuscitated, treated and admitted in a regional hospital until she recovered. Now, she is on immunotherapy and she is doing very well, many of her allergy symptoms have reduced. 